Broadcasting from the PLA Situation Room in Roy, New Mexico. You're listening to The Snowplow Show. Show. Now it's time. Uh, On Prank Call Nation. Cactus, 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 cactus. Cactus, 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 and today's show is sponsored by Travis and Andrea. They are a couple who uh, is sponsoring the show, and they say I keep them happy and sane during the long work days. And they became Patreon people this month, so I'm just bumping them to the front of the list. Especially because Travis did this amazing drawing of Roy Gerbel, which uh, I posted on phonelosers.org on the last show update. So everyone needs to go look at that. Go to phonelosers.org and look at the last update whatever that was called, and uh, you'll see Travis's amazing drawing. Thanks for the support, you guys. Also, thanks to Jason, who uh, who made this background music that I'm playing right now. This uh, song is called The Ballad of Roy, New Mexico. Hey, do you guys remember uh, Janine? I can't remember when I called her. I think it might have been... I mean, it's, it has to have been a, within the last month. Uh, but she was the girl on Twitter that checked in at a place, and I called her up, and said she was creeping people out so she claims she left the place crying she's the one that used way too many hashtags Uh, a listener named luke from the uk has been keeping an eye on her twitter apparently i've created janine stalkers from that call i guess and he posted a screen cap of something she posted this week about pla and the tweet that he captured here says uh, she wrote snowplow show at phone losers glad it was a joke and then hashtag tears in vain. Gotta have those hashtags in there with Janine. And then she has a link to the episode that her call appeared in. So I guess she's okay with it. Or at least she isn't emailing me with threats and stuff. Or demanding that the episode be taken down. So so that's nice. Thanks for the update, Luke. On the last show, I demonstrated uh, the whole, um, you know, getting someone's info from their license plate thing. Uh, you know, by calling local businesses, local Jiffy Lube and Les Schwab and getting my own information. And I posted the video on my Facebook this morning and uh, my, my friend, my close personal friend Lucky, Lucky225, he, he says he had this idea a long time ago and uh, it works nationally for Walmart and Jiffy Lube subscribers. Uh, he also says it works for a place called Just Breaks, never heard of that one, a place called America's Tire and Firestone Tires are also other good places to check. But I don't know about the whole national thing, so... I mean, I mean, he's like saying I could call any Jiffy Lube in the entire country and get my info from any of them. So I'm gonna give that a try. We're gonna see if Lucky is full of crap, or if he knows what he's talking about. I'm gonna pick one at random here from Google Maps in New Jersey, uh, the other side of the country from me. And let's see how this goes. Thank you for calling the Jiffy Lube. Our Jiffy Lube signature service oil change is pleased by... Good evening, Jiffy Lube, with no appointments necessary. This is... Can I help you? Hello, this is Carl from the corporate office with Jiffy Lube. Yes, hi. Um, hi, were you having problems with your computer there? It seems like we haven't been receiving any of the check-ins today. Mm, none that I'm aware of. Oh, okay, and so the computer is... What do you mean by the check-ins? Well, you know, the any of the oil changes, or... We, we just really? We usually receive them... Here at the home office, and we haven't received anything. I've done forty-nine cars today. Oh, okay. Well, that must be some. Um, and I've had no issues on my end whatsoever. Oh, are you able to pull up the information by the license plate? Because that's we. I have like a test Certainly. license plate. I could give you to see if it'll pull up. Sure. Let me uh, get onto my bay screen. Operation Bay. Okay. Go ahead. Which uh, state? That's uh, uh, Oregon. Okay. Let me get to there. Very good. Go ahead. 462CRL. Uh, comes up for a Brad Carter. Okay, yeah, that's the one it should be. Is the which, is the phone number the 609 phone number? That's one. No, the phone number comes up as 541. Wait. 
oh. on the customer information, if that's what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, they told me it would be a different one here, but uh, 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 address is PO Box four six five. Yeah, that's that's the one. Okay. And uh, they want me to get maybe the information from the last few check-ins. They just want to make sure that they pull up. Okay, that's aborted. Okay, so what do you want me to do next? Oh, um, are you just are you able to pull up like maybe the last few customers? They wanted me to get the information from the last few so they can put them into their system and see if they pull up. Okay, I'll give you. Uh, let's go with the last one. Okay. Um, eight six five zero eight. Okay, and the name. Jennifer. Okay. Isn't that just a regular oil change? Mm, top off cool one. Okay. And they just want me to get several of those. Like, uh, Go ahead. Uh, you want the one prior to that? Sure, that works. Uh, phone number 609. Okay, I edited the rest of that out, the rest of that call. It was just him reading me three phone numbers. That was kind of boring. So I guess Lucky is not full of crap. That was pretty easy. Uh, the guy even asked what state I was in. See, that's the thing that made me think it wouldn't work. Like, you know, all the license plate numbers. Like, are, are like can't, can't there be repeats from state to state? I, I don't even know if that's possible or not. But anyway, yeah, it's true. You can call any Jiffy Lube in the entire country and check someone's license plate with it easily. Holy crap. I cannot wait for someone on the road to piss me off so I can write down their license plate number and, and show up at their house and shoot them with my gun. That's what I'm going to do. Because, you know, I can't just pull my gun out of my glove box and shoot them on the road. I get caught. Instead, I'm going to get their info and go to their homes and shoot them in the face. Thank you for the new information, Lucky. And, uh, you know, that turned out to be, uh, um, you know, I got three, three customer phone numbers from that location. So I guess I need to call these customers. I wrote them all down who, uh, who just got oil changes within the past hour. Wow, my show is taking a left turn. Thanks to Lucky. Looks like I'm going to call oil change places. And, and this, by the way, is what I was referring to on the last show when I said that Jiffy Lube has helped us out so much. They help us out by giving us hilarious numbers to prank of their customers. So let's call the first one. Let's call Jennifer. Talk to her about her, uh, her oil change. Hello? Hi, Jennifer? Yes? Hey, it's Lucky from uh, Jiffy Lube. You were in here to get your oil changed earlier? Yeah. And uh, we topped off your coolant... Mm-hmm. And um, I just found out from one of my coworkers, uh, he, instead of topping off your coolant, he had to urinate, and he just urinated in your coolant tank. Bullshit. And, and I felt kind of bad about that. Yeah. You know, our employees don't normally do that sort of thing. But, I mean, it won't hurt your car or anything, but, you know, just so you know. There's Y'all better come clean that shit out if you're serious. Well, I mean, it's in the coolant. It's not. It's not like you can smell it or anything. And it actually, to be honest, urine and? urine works really well as a coolant, as an antifreeze and as a coolant. That is disgusting. I mean, we we tried to <laughs> um, we tried to get them to let us just start. I just went to Jiffy Lube. I well, changed my oil and they hey, just hey, I'm, off my I'm talking here, ma'am. And he's telling me that his employee peed in my coolant. But, <laughs> <laughs> that's what he says it's ma'am can you still hear me yes oh, okay because I mean I was in the middle of a sentence and you just rudely interrupted me and started talking to someone else okay so continue oh okay yeah we're not going to clean it out it's fine like uh it's kind of the pe- the well, ur- I'll just go I'll just go drain it and I'll get it out and I'll change it you're you d- oh come on you're a woman you don't know how to do that kind of stuff don't, don't, Bullshit. Don't, and it's not hard to Google anything in the world. Don't. Pre- oh, okay. Why don't you get your? Oil, why don't you change your own oil? You can Google how to change your own oil and save yourself forty bucks every three months. Okay, and I just changed it two weeks ago. Why'd you bring it here then? Just to get the oil life thingy back on. That way I can remember, and also for the sticker for how many mileage. <laughs> why can't you just keep track of that? Can't you look up on Google how to keep track of how many miles it's been? Can't you just reset your odometer? Every time you change your yeah, own oil? Yeah, and, and I did. I was actually, I knew I was at 100 something. What did you need a sticker for then? Like I explained, I already changed my oil. Why, why don't you get on Google and learn how to print stickers and, you know, just make your own sticker and put it on your window? Why don't you just write it on there with a Sharpie since you're so smart? Okay, well, I will next time. Thanks. All right. Well, listen, the, the urine, it, it's diluted by all the coolant and water in there. 
So you don't have to worry about it. You, you can't even tell that it's there. It just makes the coolant extra green. Okay, thanks. It, it makes it like a fluorescent, a cool fluorescent color. It's like well, it'll it's, be changed. But it's like, thanks. It's like have there's a, a great it's day. like there's a disco in your engine. Bye. Don't hang up yet. I still have more things to tell you. Ma'am, don't hang up. What do you got to tell me? Well, now I don't want to tell you because you have an attitude about it. You want me to tell you how to make a sticker? Oh. Well, she took that well in the end. I mean, she started getting angry and I, I calmed her down. I, I fixed things. So you're welcome, Jennifer. Uh, the second one's name is Greg. He also got an oil change and coolant because Greg doesn't know how to Google how to change his own oil, of course, you know. He's so dumb. He may, he may as well be a woman. Hi, you reached Bridget. I'm unable to answer. Hi. Hello? Hey, Bridget. Hi. Hi. I can barely hear you. Am I on speaker or something? I'm sorry? Am I on speaker? I can barely hear you. Yeah, I'm driving. Oh, well, forget the laws. Just pick up the phone. Well, you kept calling and calling. Yeah, yeah. That's because you wouldn't answer. Hello? Hey, can you hear me? Not really. I'm driving. Okay, well, why'd you pick up then? Because you kept calling me. Oh, okay. Well, hey, this is Lucky over at Jiffy Lube. Employee number yeah. 225. Yeah. And uh, I just needed to let... I, I'm supposed to apologize. My manager said I need to apologize to you, so I just wanted to say I'm sorry. What do you have to apologize to me for? Oh, because... Um, well, I, was it you that brought it in? Because I peed in your coolant tank. Like, I really had to go go urinate, and I peed in the coolant. What? I I urinated in your coolant. Because we topped off your coolant, and it was open, and it was just there, and I really needed to pee. So I, I urinated in, in your coolant tank. Who is this? My name is Lucky. Is this a joke? No, ma'am. No, he just said I needed to apologize. So I'm really sorry that I did that, and it won't happen again. Sorry. Oh. Uh, she needs to accept my my apology, right? Hi, you reached Bridget. Oh. I'm unable to answer your call. Come on. Hi, you reached Bridget. It's almost as if she uh, hung up and immediately started making a new call. Here it goes. Oh, look, she's on the phone. Hi, you reached Bridget. Okay. I'm just going to assume that Bridget accepted my apology. Uh, that one was, uh, you know... Jiffy Lube said that was Greg, but it was, I guess, Greg's wife. They're going to have such exciting things to talk about at dinner tonight. Spicing up their marriage. So now we're going to try Michelle. Hello? Hi, is this Michelle? Yes. Hey, this is uh, Lucky from the Jiffy Lube. Hi, how are you? Hi, pretty good. Hey, um, uh, okay. we have an employee here. He, he uh, changed your oil filter, I mean your air filter today. Okay. And um, he, he, uh, I, I don't know how to explain this. He's kind of a hippie. Uh, he just got like a big pile of leaves out back and replaced your air filter with a bunch of leaves. And he, he says that's nature's air filter. So I just want to apologize for that. So he didn't change my air filter? No, he changed it. He changed it into a, a just a handful of leaves. And it, it filters the same way, you know, like it, it'll, it'll filter pretty good. Leaves will. What the hell and are you talking about? Your air filter. You know, your your air from now on, it's going to be filtered by nature. By by leaves. Okay, so I spent $25 for nothing? Are you, are you trying to explain to me? I don't understand. Oh, well, no. He, he did the work that he was supposed to do. He just, instead of using a real air filter, he used a handful of leaves. Like from the, the, the tree next to the building. Are you fucking kidding me? No. Is this some kind of joke? No, I wouldn't joke about this. Um, okay, well, I, I don't understand what the hell you're talking about. Well, if you want to bring For $25, it... For $25, you're telling me there's leaves in my car? It's not in a bad way. Like, it's still going to... It's really good at filtering yeah, what the... what hell are you calling for? Well, if you want to come in, we can we can change it back to an air filter. 
But also, he he uh, urinated in your in your coolant tank. Oh my gosh! You were such an ass. Goodbye. <laughs> no, that's nature's coolant. I loved her. Her her. She had such a quick change of emotional states there. She was like really really pissed off, and then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, she's really amused. That's how all prank calls should end. <sighs> okay. Anyway, yeah. Thanks for that, Lucky. For um letting us all know that, that this is incredibly easy uh, and, and it's, it's a nationwide thing. A- any Jiffy Lube in the entire country can give you any license plate number in the entire country. It, it's as if you work at the DMV. You can just look up anything you want. So that's awesome. Oh, and speaking of Lucky, uh, just completely coincidental here, uh, on my Twitter, uh, Dr. Unk uh, sent me this article on vice.com and it's about this new service called Such Calls. And I won't get into it all. I, I want to try it out myself soon, but uh, it's something that Lucky runs, apparently. And it's called it's uh, suchcalls.com. Everyone should go try it out. It's it's like, um, in a way, it's kind of like PLA's T&I system. You know, it's just like a, a voice system you call into. But his has like a bunch of phone freaking Easter eggs and stuff in it. I'm looking forward to trying that out soon. So everyone else should, too. Hi, this is Grandpa. You're listening to Phone Losers of America Radio, streaming the soothing sounds of the PLA, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. But don't bother me during bingo or supper or jitterbug practice, okay? Uh... Jitterbug practice. Okay. So I have exciting news. Uh, yesterday, I dropped 179 bucks of your Patreon money on some new PLA stickers from StickerRobot.com. And uh, the reason I did this is because of today's show sponsors. They purchased stickers from me too, uh, Travis and Andrea, and I didn't have any to give them. So uh, I've been out like for over a month now, but I'm finally stocking back up on them. So those I, I've had to actually turn away orders. You know, people have been asking for stickers and I'm like, oh, sorry, no. I don't have any anymore for the past month and a half or whatever, so that always sucks. Uh, but these are the the you know the standard PLA logo with the lettering around them, and I guess they'll be here within a month. So everyone should go to phonelosers.org/store and help me recoup that 179 bucks because they'll be in stock again soon. Woohoo! Exciting stuff. Also, I know everyone's really concerned about uh, the bit rates of the feeds and stuff, and, and you love when I talk about that constantly on every single show. So uh, I just want to mention, like, you know, I've been experimenting with different bit rates. I think the last show I made 160 kilobits per second, and uh, someone was complaining. I mean, like, several people have complained, uh, saying, you know, I don't have 3G, it takes forever. So um, yeah, I'm just going to keep the main feed at what it's always been at 64 kilobits per second. Screw stereo. Who needs stereo? Who listens to stereo in 2014? That's just dumb. Uh, I'm still, I, I still haven't got a feed up of the high quality feed. I'm working on that, but it's going to happen. Until then, it's located at the uh, phonelosers.org slash media directory. The, all the 320s. All the high quality versions are in there if you want to just listen to them manually. Oh, and yesterday, Perth. Uh, Perth was saying he was having troubles getting on phonelosers.org and listening to the show because uh, the, the website is um, it's rated as you know illegal hacking material or something like that. So he can't listen to the shows. But since it's on phonelosers.com now, the, the media thing slash media, uh, he can listen just fine through... Um, I don't know if he said Stitcher or TuneIn. Probably both of them would work for him. But that's what he's doing now, and he's able to listen to the show again while he's at work on their their Nazi servers that filters, that censors the PLA. So that's awesome, Perth. I'm glad you're able to waste your company's work time once again. Here's a request from Sean. He says he knows it's annoying to get emails from fans, and he's sorry, but it's inevitable because I'm so talented don't stop the snowplow show. It's amazing, even when it all fails. He probably wrote this right after that show I had where, like, every single call was just a fail. Anyway, he says he has an idea. He says a place of employment that may or may not be his 
is really stupid when it comes to returns. They will take anything. Like, seriously, I returned what later turned out to be a bag of shit. I mean, literal feces. So he thinks I should call them up and make sure that a stolen item or toilet in a bag is eligible for return at my store. And he wants me to call up a place called Smith's Food and Drug. I've never heard of it. So I just spent the last five minutes or so looking at pictures on Yelp of all these different Smith's stores so I could know what they are. And it's, it looks like a grocery store plus other things. I, probably like a Walmart, I guess, but mostly grocery. Uh, he tells me some specific people I should try and ask for to see if my poo in a bag is an, an acceptable return. Thank you for calling friend and neighborhood Smith. My name's Corey. How may I help you? Hello, um, I just need to find out about your returns. Like, uh, how long do I have after I buy an item to return it? Um, I'd say about a month. About a month? I mean, is that the official, like, 30 days? Yeah. Do I have to have a receipt? Um, no. Oh, okay. But if you don't have the receipt, all I can give you is store credit. Oh, okay. Well, I have the receipt. I guess I can bring the receipt in. But I, I purchased a, um, like a desk lamp. A desk lamp? Yeah, yeah, you know, just like a light for my desk. Okay. And, um, uh, I just, I filled the box up with a bunch, like, a bunch of small bags of poop, you know, from my dog, because I take my dog yeah. for walks. I'm just going to return the box. So do you guys open the box? Or would, would they check the box to see if there's really a desk lamp in there, or would they just take the box and, you know, scan it and give me my money back? Um... Give me one second, okay? Okay. Look at that, Sean. I didn't even have to ask for the manager. He's just going to get him for me. Hopefully they sell desk lamps. I, I don't know. This is Heather. How may I help you? Hello, Heather. Hello. Hello. I just needed to find out about returns. Like, um, do I get... 30 days for return, or... What is it you're returning? It's a desk lamp. I mean, yeah, just if whatever, just bring it in. It doesn't really matter when it was purchased. Okay, and and we do need a, I do need a receipt for it, then? Uh, it works a lot better if you have it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it feels uh, a little smoother. Yeah. And, I mean, it's in a box. Like, it came in a box. Yeah. So, I was just gonna keep the lamp... And, like, maybe fill the box up with a bunch of bags of poop for my dog when I take it out on walks? <laughs> okay. And, like, would, would they open the box? I'm going to, like, tape it up real good so they can't open it easily. Uh, I think they'll open <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what they would do. Well, I mean, I've returned things there before, and they haven't opened the box. So I was thinking it might be kind of easy. Yeah, well, it could be. <laughs> you might get away with it. I've seen some pretty crazy things so okay well if they like if they happen to open the box and catch me i can just say well heather said i could try <laughs> no no well, let's I mean, not do that well, I mean, i've done it before like i bought a bunch i, I bought like motor oil uh -huh. for my car and um you know i just used the oil and then i i filled up the the containers with um like rotten milk oh my gosh no way and, yeah they took it back they didn't they didn't open it. <laughs> I saved six dollars that day. Oh my gosh! It was definitely That's worth. Pretty funny. It was definitely worth the trip out there and back to save six dollars. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that paid for my gas for the trip. <laughs> hey, we gotta. We you know we gotta take care of the customer. That's our job. So. Okay. All right. <laughs> so even if the customer is. Hey, do you sell any high-end electronics there, like iPads or? Uh, not. We have a tablet, but it's. I mean, it doesn't compare to like the iPad. Okay, but it's still worth like a hundred bucks at least, right? Oh yeah. Because maybe I could get that, and you know, just return the box. I'll fill up well, the box that, with bags uh, of poop. Well, they'll check that. I'm sure because oh, we don't put them out there on the floor, in the box. So. Yeah, but in order for you to buy it, it, we would have to get it for you, so... Well, yeah, yeah, and then I'll take it home, and then I'll bring it back and return the box without the <laughs> tablet in it. Instead, just so that it has the same weight, I'll use dog poop. Yeah. I'll use poop. I think on something like that, they're probably going to check it I, out I a have a bit. I have a shrink wrap machine. <laughs> it doesn't come shrink wrapped. Ah, oh, damn it. 
All right. Um, so tablets are out, but I can still do this desk lamp, this $25 desk lamp. Yeah, I mean, if you got it here, I don't, I'm not, I don't know. I haven't been at this store that long, so I can't think of where a desk lamp is at in this building, but. Yeah. No, no, I definitely if purchased it If it came it there. here, then okay. it will do whatever to help you out. Okay. Well, great. I will be there soon to get my money back. All for, right. For and I'll make sure to tell him to check the desk lamp. No, 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 please don't. <laughs> Cause that'll ruin it. I want to get 25 bucks back. I'll spend it in your store. For dog poop, no. <laughs> yeah, a box full of dog poop. It's the same weight as a desk lamp. I'm, I'm weighted on my scale and everything. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we'll have to have him call me up there so I can meet you. <laughs> you sound pretty interesting. <laughs> okay, I can't wait. All right. M- maybe uh, maybe uh, after I do my return, I can you know, use my 25 bucks and take you out for a cup of coffee or something. Oh, yeah, I don't know I don't know about that, but Oh, come on. <laughs> I just like to put a face with the voice just to see <laughs> Oh, you're in for a big disappointment. Oh. <laughs> okay, well I'll I'll meet you soon. Okay. And, uh, I'll be there soon for our date. All right. All right, bye. <laughs> bye. Yes. <laughs> I'm I'm so getting lucky tonight. So Sean, do you know Heather? She seems nice. Maybe you can put in a good word for me. I'll call back and ask for one of the people you told me to ask for. One moment, please. Thanks for calling you from the neighborhood, Smith. This is Francine. How can I help you? Hello. Um, is Bob or Kevin in? Um, let me take one second. Okay. You can be Thanks for calling your friendly Smith. Oh, hi. Who's this? This is Kevin. Oh, hey, Kevin. I just wanted to ask about a return. Okay. Like, um, I just, uh, I bought something and it was, uh, you know, it was like $35 and I was going to return just the box, um, but I was going to keep the item. Like, did did they open the boxes to check returns? Okay. What, what's the item that you have? Uh, Well, I don't want to say, but I mean, like if I bring the item back and I'm just going to fill the box up with uh, like dog poop from because I take my dog for walks and we have to collect the poop in bags and that'll weight it. So it it feels like the same item and it feels like there's something in there and it's covered with plastic and everything. But can I am I able to do that to get a get my money back? But keep well, I'm, com- I'm kind of confused on what you're actually asking me. If you got an item that you bought here and it's still intact, then yes, we would return it. I, I don't know. I'm a little confused on what you're asking me. Well, I'm going to keep the item. I'm just going to return the box and get my money back. You're going to keep the item that was inside the box? Yes, and instead, inside the box, I'm going to fill it up with, with uh, you know, shit. Uh, and that way it'll weight it down so it feels like the same weight. Okay, so this is a joke then, right? Oh, no, not a joke at all, sir. Okay, so you're telling me you're gonna give me, you're gonna seal a box back up with shit, and you want me to return it for you? Yeah, but I'm no. What I'm asking is, do they open the box and check when I return something? Like, even if I tape it up real good, will they still open it up? <laughs> uh, would they look at the box? Yes, to see if it had an item, if it was returnable to the shelf or not. Yeah, if I just tell them it's in there and it's fine, they'll just trust me, right, and just give me my, my money back. Yeah, that's what we would do. Okay, great. So I will be in there later today with a box of shit, and I'm going to get my money back for it. Okay. Wait, do I even have to bring the box back? Because it's kind of a nice box. Can I just bring in bags of poop? Sure. Like, just, and just, uh, maybe I could cut the barcode off of the box and put it sure. on, on this giant bag Not of... Not a problem. This, okay, perfect then. Great, I'll be in there soon. Not a problem. I'm looking forward to getting my money back. Okay. I'm gonna go spend it at. Sounds Wal- good. I'm gonna go spend it at a real store like Walmart. Okay, if you say so, sir. I do, and I'm correct. Okay. All right, we'll All right. take care of you when you get here. Okay, thanks, Kevin. Okay, have a good day. You too. Bye. Bye. <laughs> oh, they're so friendly at that store. I want to move. I'm going to start shopping at Smith's Food and Drug Centers because they're the friendliest staff ever. I I can see why it's easy for you to scam them. 
Sean. Uh, this this reminds me of this thing that uh, I did. Um, well, I mean, yeah, I did quite a bit actually. Back in 1995, I really needed a uh, a new modem to get access to this amazing new thing called the internets. Uh, you know, my my whatever 2400 baud just wasn't cutting it, so I wanted to buy a uh, a new 14.4 uh, baud or or maybe 28.8. I forget what it was. But uh, I, I bought an external modem, and I took out the circuit board, and I kept the power supply on it, and then I just, I returned the box, and it had the modem case on it and everything. I mean, I mean it had the modem case inside of it, but there was no mo- actual modem inside of the enclosure. It was just, uh, I had the circuit board, and I had the circuit board, like, just had the circuit board of flashing lights on my desk to get on the internet at blazingly fast speeds of 28 baud or... 14 baud or whatever it was but anyway after i returned it oh and i filled the inside of the casing uh the circuit board where the circuit board would go uh, i filled it up with uh, pepsi cans i crushed pepsi cans crushed them up really good you know for the weight of the circuit board and then of course after i did this i made a prank call to them so i'm going to find that prank call right now and i'm going to play it and uh, i think in this prank call it's mostly uh, my friend el jefe speaking or maybe it's me. It's been a long time since I've heard this one, but here's an old prank call from 1995, which I'm sure has horrible sound quality, but it's where I called up a store that I just scammed. Hello? Hello? Yes. I was in there about 11.30. Yes. I brought back a modem. Do you remember me? A what? A modem for my computer. I yes. Remember. The the one for $160, yes. Yeah, it was, it was wet. Yeah. I'm just wondering if you guys opened it yet. Um... I think that we've got it probably back in the uh, in the back now, getting ready for shipment. Where are you shipping it to? Uh, back to the company. Oh, you should open it first. Why? Because you'll laugh when you see all the soda cans that I put in there and took the real modem out. Will you laugh? I'll be right back. Security! Help! We've been fooled! Yes, that was El Jefe, the co-founder of Phone Losers of America, talking to that lady. And you could hear her, uh, sort of. I mean, it's really hard to hear because the sound quality is so bad. But you could hear her in the background saying, I'll be right back. And she just kind of drops the phone and never returns. So we hung up and called back and talked to this next employee. I can never go in the store again. Why? Service is Mary. Can I help you? No, I want to talk to Pearl. Okay, uh, she, she left to the back to do something. What can I do for you? Oh, well, she, uh, I just called a minute ago. Uh-huh. I returned a modem today. Uh, what is it? It was a modem. It's like a for your computer. Okay. And, uh, I bought it yesterday. I took it home. I opened it and took the modem out and brought you back a casing filled with Pepsi cans. <laughs> Isn't that funny? Oh, my God. I screwed you guys out of money. Isn't that so cool? No, it's not. Why not? It's not. Aren't you laughing? No, I'm not. Is my Should it be funny? Huh? Yeah. Should it be funny? Well, I'm laughing. I'm pissing on myself laughing. Well, I, I guess my, if you want to call it funny. I saved $160. So what is it you want? I just like laughing at you. Is think, that all you called for? Pretty much, yeah. You know, well, it's not a funny joke. Yes, it is. Well, you go ahead and keep laughing. I will. Tomorrow I'm going to do it to Kmart. <laughs> I got an email here from Hazel. You guys might remember Hazel. She's the one that figured out um, somebody was looking for a certain prank. And she knew where it was located. And I played it. The the one where uh, God intervened and put me on the phone with a tenant at an apartment complex. Anyway, Hazel wrote me. And she has like a need for information now I have to pay back my my debt to her uh, the only problem is that the email address that she uh, wrote me with is invalid so it just got sent back to me so she's looking for the location of two things uh, the first thing uh, I, I know where it's located she wants the complete 24-hour recording of the uh, the 24-hour marathons that, that happened on Madhouse uh, last year and then the year before that we had one for PLA so I'm going to put the links to both of those in the show notes. Like a link, uh, just um, one of them's on phonelosers.org slash media, and then the other one is a torrent that Tabachi set up. And for some reason he named it the Phone Losers Marathon, even though it was a madhouse marathon. 
Uh, anyway, question number two, though, I do not have an answer to, so I'm going to have to ask the listeners once again to help out and, and help help us find this for Hazel. Uh, she's looking for an episode of The Phone Show where someone makes a customer service call and convinces two people at first to put their phone in the microwave or something and then do a prayer with their phone. And he, uh, she knows it's in the phone show archive. She's 90% sure that it's in the phone show archive. She doubts anyone would know, but she's just hoping to find that call. And I don't know where that call is located. I remember that call very well. And I think it was uh, El Gordo Uno uh, who made that call. Uh, someone was complaining about their BlackBerry on Twitter, so we called them up and started troubleshooting with them. And uh, he actually got them to, uh, this guy and his girlfriend or wife or whatever, got them each to hold a side of the phone and say a prayer with him to try and fix the phone problems, which was awesome. And then he tried to get them to put their phone in the microwave to, <laughs> to fix it, and they were about to do it. And since I'm just like the destroyer of all things hilarious, I made them stop. Um, and, and, you know, I wouldn't let them do that. But yeah, that's somewhere in the phone show. I think it was in 2010. You guys have to find out where it is and send me a link to the show and tell me at what point uh, that, that call happens. And I will play it on the next show if you guys can find it. But if you search the archives, phonelosers.org slash phone show, uh, and just search for the name Gordo, probably that's how you'll find it. You, you just look for the shows that have Gordo in them because there's not a whole lot of them. If I'm even right about that being Gordo, I'm probably wrong. But we'll find out soon, because someone is going to know where that is. And I'm going to play it on the next show. Hi, Brad. I have a few jokes for you. Why shouldn't you have phone sex? Because you might get hearing aids. <laughs> ha ha. My cell phone was going to sue somebody, but it didn't have a case. Okay, one more. That was the best. A boy swallowed some coins and was taken to a hospital. When his mom telephoned to ask how he was, a nurse said, No change yet. Isn't that funny? The funniest thing I've ever heard. Okay, bye. And then after that, there's like 20 seconds of him trying to figure out how to hang up his phone. Yeah, whoever you are, Houston person, best jokes ever. Here is a request from Grant. He says he really wants me to prank call a man in Texas whose name is Jerry. Gives me his mobile phone number and he's a straight up jerk. He runs a horse barn where you board your horses and has turned the barn from a nice place to a greedy mess. Whatever that means. He took over this other ranch while the owner was ill. They were good friends and he has made the place a public danger. He started buying cheap hay, which has problems, leading to the death of one of the boarded horses. Most of the food is unhealthy. Their treatment of animals is terrible. Uh, there's a bunch of information here. Call as if you're some equestrian vet or like public health police and tell them that all of the hay provided is basically poisoned and has become a problem for the health of the horses. I can't tell them the hay is poisoned. I don't want to cause a panic with the animals, even if he's being a jerk to the animals anyway. Sounds like he wouldn't care. He'd be like, oh, lol, poisoned horses. I could say that I'm a tax guy, telling them he's been evading taxes by having people pay for the board under the table, and you're going to audit him. He says that Jerry is really irritable and doesn't understand technology whatsoever. So making this call could possibly be insanely funny. Grant also says I'm the best, which I agree with. Cactus Cactus is how he signs it. That's not me saying that. That would be weird. So, I don't know. Say I'm the tax guy? You know, there's, there's this other thing I've been wanting to try. So I'm going to completely ignore your suggestions, Grant. And I'm going to try this instead. And then, after this, I'll call and say I'm the tax guy. This is Jerry Worst. Oh, hello, Jerry. This is Roy from AT&T Wireless Corporate Security. Yes, sir. Uh, our, our systems have detected that you have a virus on your cell phone. 
it, it's called VN's botnet. Are you aware of this? No. Okay, yeah, it looks like, I, I don't know, it, you may have downloaded something on your phone to get the virus, but hackers are using your phone to call Nigeria for free, and they're charging it to you. So your phone your phone bill is up currently up to $3,800. Well, then that needs to be taken up. Yeah, yeah, we're going to work on that. We just, um, we need you to get that virus off your phone, though. Um, it, like they okay. can, they can, can do anything. Tell me how to do that. They can do anything on your phone. They can see through your camera and hear anything on the microphone. And uh, okay. so, can you tell me how to do that? Oh yeah, I can uh, walk you through the steps. It looks like they're using your internet connection to launch denial of attacks on Walmart's credit card network. So your phone might be filled with a oh. lot of credit card numbers right now. Well, oh, hold on a second. I'm, I'm driving. Can I give you over to my wife so she can do whatever steps are necessary? Okay, sure. Can you walk? walk with you? Thanks. Yeah, can you call us back in just a just a little bit? Sure. How long would a little bit be? Uh call us back in like twenty minutes. Twenty minutes. Okay. I'll do that. Thanks. Give you time okay, to call bye. us back. Make sure that we're real. 20 minutes. I'll wait 20 minutes and call them back. Uh, my guess is that they are going to uh, they're going to call AT&T Wireless and see if there's really an issue. All right, so through the magic of pre-recorded prank calls, it is it's been 20 minutes now since I last called Jerry the horse slayer. So let's call him back. Hello. Hello Jerry, it's Roy again from AT&T. Hello? Uh-huh. Can you hear me okay? I can. Okay, yeah. Your, name, can. Is, your name is Roy. What's your last name, Roy? Gerbel. Can you spell that for me? Sure, it's G-H-E-R-B-E-I-L. And where are you calling from, Roy? From AT&T Wireless. Roy, you sound so legitimate, but this is such a scam. Why, why do you say it's a, why do you say it's a scam? Because <laughs> you wouldn't be trying to sell it so hard, Chief. How, so how, we're done. We're, I don't believe anything you say. So how am I selling you hard? Your effort. Hey, hey, listen, you fucking horse killer. <laughs> Adios. <laughs> Bye. Ugh, they they got me there, but that was obviously the evil laugh of a horse killer sorry grant uh he may not understand technology but i guess he can he can smell bullshit because you know he's the horse guy and bullshit and yeah i think it's always good to end your show on a complete fail of a call so why not let's let's end this now um Thanks for listening. As always, everyone, if you want to leave a voicemail for the show, by the way, the number is 814-422-5309. You can, uh, you know, say some hilarious phone-related jokes or pretend you're a grandpa listening to PLA Radio because that's what this is, is PLA Radio, of course. Don't forget to subscribe to the show uh, with the podcast app on your smartphone or computer, or at least subscribe to the YouTube channel at youtube.com slash phone losers shows and support the snowplow show with Patreon at patreon.com slash phone losers. I think in the spirit of, uh, you know, giving out personal information and, and everything on this show that we've done. I'm going to play uh, Rappy McRapperson's amazing song that features his real social security number in it. Oh, wait, wait, before I start that. By the way, several people have told me already, so I'm just going to try and put a stop to this, that uh, in the last show I, I, let, I accidentally let my cell phone number go out over the air, even though I bleeped out my license plate number. Uh, that, that wasn't a mistake. Uh, that was my old cell phone number at that place. 
So it's okay. It's all right. That cell phone number has probably been reassigned to somebody else. It's not really my phone number anymore. And today I let my uh, license plate number go out. I, I didn't bleep it out this time, and that's because I put up a video on on youtube.com slash phone losers of America, which, uh, you know, has pictures of my license plate all over it. So why bother? You know, everyone just have my information. I don't care, I guess. But anyway, here's Rappy McRapperson to end the show with. Thanks for listening, everyone. Goodbye. <laughs>